Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to test out the All Powers 60 watt portable solar panel with the Benlab VM600A multimeter. There are gonna be three different tests in here that you can use to prove that your solar panel is doing what you paid for. Let's go take a look. What better way to test out a multimeter than with a brand new solar panel? This is the All Powers 60 watt portable solar panel. And if we open it up inside, you get a power cable, 5521 on this side, 5525 on that side. You get a couple of carabiner clips, two total, and then a bunch of adapters for a lot of popular things that you might want to charge with it. This little pocket right here is a big enough pocket for one of their battery banks that they have, and it has a direct controller on the bottom of it for USB-C and regular USB, as well as an output and then another input because one of the things that you can do with these panels is you can gang them together into two. This is the Venlab VM600A. It is a true RMS meter. In the box, you get the meter, four AAA batteries, a temperature probe, and a really good quality set of probes. The bullet connectors on these probes feature insulation to protect yourself from yourself. One thing I wish they would adjust on this meter is it's a non-captive screw on the back. I sure would hate to lose that underneath this picnic table. This has a fast continuity check. And a nice little light, if that's your thing. This is test number one. With your solar panel set out in a way that it's going to gather as much sunlight as possible, maybe even angled towards the sun so it catches even more light, you're gonna to wanna to test out to make sure that it meets up with the maximum output voltage. In this case, the voltage and current is 20 volts and three amps. So we're gonna to test to see how close to that spec it is in this current amount of sun. It is almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Take your positive probe and insert it into the center of your connector and your negative probe and touch it on the outside. Depending on the panel you're using, you might have a barrel connector like what I'm showing here, or you might have MC4 connectors or you might even have an SAE connector or an Anderson power pole connector. The process is the same for all of them, positive to positive, negative to negative. Set your meter either to auto ranging or into a scale that looks appropriate. We're looking at 20 volts, so you'd wanna have it at the two zero setting more than likely. And with a 20 volt rating, we're getting 20 volts out. Perfect, this is test number two. We're gonna measure the short circuit current and the short circuit amperage listed here is three amps. We're gonna have our meter set up in the same way in terms of probes, but we're gonna change out how we have it connected here. Make sure that your fuse rating on your meter is higher than the amperage rating in your owner's manual. So I'm gonna change my probe over to the 20 amp setting. And I'm going to set the meter to test amps. Again, as much sun as we can give it. 2.88. That's fairly close to 3.3, considering that we're not getting 100% of the sun right now. No complaints on my end. Number three, measuring current draw from your solar panel using your multimeter or a solar charge controller. You're going to need a battery box and a charge controller of some kind for this so that you have a destination for the power to go to. This is my solar generator box. I have a build video up here in the corner for you. And what you need to do is you need to interrupt one of the signal lines, which is why I have all these janky power cables going everywhere. This is the output from the solar panel, which is converted into Anderson power poles, which then comes up here and gets split off. The negative line is hooked up to a negative jumper alligator clip, which then goes back over and feeds into the negative side of the charge controller. The positive line comes up here and feeds into the positive line of the multimeter. Your multimeter, again, needs to have the right number of amperage rating to be able to handle the load of the solar panel. In this case, it's 3.3 amps and we're rated at 20 amps here, which is fantastic. And then coming out the other side, we finish that connection with another alligator clip, which then goes through that same cable back to the solar charge controller. And right now with the amount of sun that we're doing and the charge state of the battery, we're pulling 0.16 amps. And sometimes we get up to two. If this battery wasn't in fully charged float status, you'd likely see the full amount of amperage that the solar panel can pump into the battery. Since the battery's full, the charge controller just puts a little tiny bit in just to keep that charge up for you. So a lot of different factors go into whether a solar panel puts out the amount of power that it is rated at or not. 
the cleanliness of the solar panel, the amount of direct sunlight that hits the panel, and the charge status on the battery that you are trying to shove power into. We demonstrated three different ways today to show that your solar panel is doing what you paid for. This solar panel is doing the thing. I will have a couple more videos coming out on this solar panel and other solar panels in the future. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel in order to catch all of those. In the meantime, there's a video right here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.